CMA Foundation students. I wasn't well for uh, two three days, so I have a toothache. So you could see my face. My face is swollen, so maybe it is subsiding slowly. <coughs> so that's the reason I could not give you classes for two days. You just let's continue from uh, page number. It's in your material. There is no need of preparing a separate material because uh, it's very clear in your material. So I just rather copy paste. There's, there's no use. Okay, I don't need to trim the material. So you're on page number. According to your uh, CMA Foundation material, you're on page number eleven point four one. Eleven point four one. Okay, so just go to. in your uh, cma foundation material the last lesson if you could see the last lesson 11.6 uh, types of earlier in my lecture i was talking about uh, conflicts i said uh, when there is a difference of opinion when there is a disagreement when there is a, a difference of uh, what do you call uh, um, expertise etc etc so different arguments will be there so in any organization there is a possibility conflicts can happen between employees conflicts can happen between employer and employee conflicts can happen between two individuals conflicts can happen between one individual and a group of uh, people conflicts can happen between groups two groups like conflict can happen between two departments conflicts can happen between two individuals conflicts can happen between one group and one individual so there's every possibility conflicts can take place either way okay so we had already studied the introduction yesterday i mean in my last class i was talking about it see causes of internal conflicts sometimes um, it's because of the uh, group recognition <coughs> yeah it's because of the interdependence because every group is dependent on the other group so obviously what happens when i depend on other group and other group doesn't support me at all so definitely it would lead to so many issues and uh, sometimes um, uh, power structures will be different sometimes status will be different sometimes culture you come from that also will create conflicts and sometimes um, when it comes to the jurisdiction like uh, while i perform my duties in the company i might have a confusion as to to what extent i can do and other fellow also will have a confusion to what extent he can do so when there is a confusion related to power when there is a confusion related to jurisdiction when there is a confusion related to what everybody is supposed to do who does what okay etc and culture obviously when people come from different uh, setups and different values and different beliefs and different ethics and different models definitely there will be some clashes or uh, different thinkings yes ambiguity that means when you are confused with goals etc this these things scarcity of resources so we already had discussed in the past so when we talk about organizational conflict we are actually talking about uh, people have differences people have disagreements people do not have common opinion when there are difference when when there's a disagreement when there's a difference of opinion then definitely there will be a conflict and this conflict if you don't handle it properly it would lead to a complete collapse of the organization so you must use them in a healthy way in a constructive way so that you can definitely you know make them more advantages uh, to the organization so when there is a difference of opinion as as we discussed before uh, if one fellow says something another fellow says something that means the other fellow who said something could be innovative could be better one could be better solution could be a different thing so all these things could definitely help us to you know understand that company culture is completely different okay <coughs> so we are now here to talk about types of conflicts okay so go slow it's there in the material very clearly always remember ca cma cs foundation mein cma material of theory subjects are trimmed material okay they are not like other uh, courses which is very lengthy they have given only what is required maybe in some subjects they must have given something which is more than necessary some chapters some concepts but that anyway you need to take the help of a teacher types of conflicts there are three one is relationship conflict task conflict process conflict relationship is so look here interpersonal it says interpersonal tensions among the individuals that have to do with their relationship per se not the task at hand that means some many a times what happens we have a conflict because we did not maintain a good rapport with others when two department individuals have not established a right rapport right relationship i mean they didn't understand each other they didn't understand the objectives of each other they didn't understand the roles of each other they didn't understand the tasks of each other 
I mean, many a times we keep fighting with each other because I just don't like you. That's it. You don't like me. That's it. So the moment you start developing that kind of an opinion on your colleague, definitely what happens, you won't accept whatever he says. Understood. So when you suppose you belong to finance department and you are interacting with HR department, usually you don't like HR department, let's say. Because they come up with always rules, uh, regulations, uh, uh, trainings. Uh, these are all nonsense they will come. So you think uh, they are all pro uh, non-productive people. We are all productive people, etc. Et so when, <coughs> when people did not have a proper uh, a relationship, in this proper understanding with each other, proper uh, what you call uh, understanding with in terms of their opinions, in terms of their uh, what you call roles, responsibilities, etc. Definitely. Will. So one very important thing, many a times in the organization you will have conflicts not because uh, of the task but because of the relationship that is not properly established now, the next important thing is task related conflict disagreement happens always because when a and b both are working in the organization a thinks that he's going to do something and he's supposed to do something b thinks that he's supposed to do the same thing otherwise sometimes a goes beyond his function because A is not confused, A is not having an idea as to exactly what he's supposed to do. Sometimes B go beyond, B goes beyond uh, his function. So when two people are there, the roles and responsibilities, if they are not properly categorized, if they are not properly divided, definitely you, you're going to face problems. So task in the sense activity, what exactly is my task? Understood? When the when when the work, when the job when the work, when the job which I am supposed to do is not clear to me, when the work or a job which he is supposed to do is not clear to him, there is every possibility both of us will fight. Understood? That is what process conflict. Process means when you talk about process in any business language, please do understand. A collection of activities which will help us to do a particular activity, particular objective is basically process. Suppose if I want to deposit cash in the bank, I have to go to the bank. Step number one, I have to stand in queue. Step number two, I have to fill up the form. Step number three, I have to hand over the cash. Step number four, like this, a collection of a bunch of activities, a bunch of activities to do certain thing will be a process. So sometimes I would say the to do something I would say this is the best process. Like let's say online classes now. So uh, many a times some of my faculty started telling me sir it's better to give life. Then I would say what if student has a network issue? What if student doesn't have a proper digital infrastructure? He doesn't have a proper phone. He doesn't have a proper proper laptop. He doesn't have a proper desktop. Then uh, my version is it's better to record properly thinking as if we are thinking from the student point of view and give it off to him so that it will be more because when you are when you're broadcasting a lecture when you are taking a live lecture what happens unless and until internet bandwidth everything is proper students won't be able to get it properly so that is my way of opinion somebody says no 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 why to record why to save it why to give it etc etc <laughs> so the process of teaching some one one person says let us record and give it one person says let us give it live you got my point so Two ways of doing so, so end of the day our objective is to teach students when we when our objective is to teach students obviously there is a disagreement understood so I always support my process is correct and the other fellow always supports uh, his process is correct like this so when we have different ideas to do something in the organization when we have different methods or processes that we have in mind, when we have decided to serve customer, we have got different methodologies, we have got different ideas, then obviously the difference of opinion will come. So difference of opinion will come because you did not establish a relationship, you had no understanding of the roles and responsibilities and about activities, what you're supposed to do, what kind of a work you are supposed to do, you do, you do not have a clarity. And about the method, a process through which you will have to serve the customer is not very clear. So these three, simply are, if in case you, you, have, you have found in the organization relationship conflict, then you can devise strategies accordingly, right? So first of all, you need to know the root cause of the conflict. So in your examination question, they might ask you which of the following is a type of conflict, relationship conflict. Task conflict process con RTP. Remember, revision test paper kind of <coughs> relationship conflict, 
task conflict and process conflict understood now so okay you always generalize this subject because the subject nature is like this you don't think generally from the perspective you don't think generally from the perspective of you don't think generally from the perspective of uh, what you call organization or a management and you don't think about uh, activities that are actually happening in the company it's going to be very difficult for you to visualize what exactly happened this kind of subject will kill you i'm telling you okay <clears throat> and if you have these basics you would be able to understand strategic management in the next level all right next one strategies for dealing with conflicts in order so when i have a conflict called rtp when i have a con conflict called rtp the relationship concept i mean relationship conflict task conflict and process conflict what will be what will be the strategy being a company being an organization what kind of a strategy i need to adopt understood that is very important thing you have to decide right so look at the first one avoid a conflict management style read that conflict management style characterized by low assertiveness of one's own interests and low cooperation with other party avoiding in the sense you cannot satisfy everybody you cannot give importance to everybody's interest when there is a disagreement when there is a difference of opinion when different people are advising on the same thing differently you cannot go on convincing everybody you know somewhere or the other you must be able to say boss mr a you are not correct mr b you are not correct something so when you you have to justify saying that boss we can't accept every one of you but i think or we think that this is the better one something like this right so avoiding is one important style i mean most of the managers will try to avoid certain opinion certain disagreements certain advices evaluating them saying that was your advice requires this so therefore we don't consider your advice something like this next one accommodating conflict management style in which one cooperates with the other party while not asserting one's own interest that means we will try to cooperate we'll try to include accommodating in the sense we'll try to allow that opinion to be included okay one is you can start avoiding completely one is you can start considering his opinion completely understood but weighing on measures that means when you reject somebody completely you must be able to give a solid reason when you have accepted somebody's opinion in difference of opinion you must be able to give a solid reason so in avoiding you will give a reason and say boss this is not correct and in accommodating you means you you will allow the opinion and say boss yes because we allow this kind of an opinion because of this so every idea every difference of opinion every disagreement you will definitely have a weightage right you will definitely have some plus and minus so you have to see only majority because in this world when we think about when we have lot of human beings and most of us will not think like human beings most of the time because of our circumstances etc so the only best option is majority understood competing a conflict management style that maximizes assertiveness and minimizes cooperation in the sense when there are two different ideas whichever is more competitive you should be able to accept okay maximize uh, what is more important minimize what is not very important compromise comp sometimes you will try to convince both the people you say was you are right he is right but right now let us continue this okay that is one thing collaborating collaborating otherwise we will try to convince people okay boss you have a different opinion shall we actually uh, continue shall we cooperate for sometimes shall we also give a hand give a try give a try and see that uh, if it works or not so in avoiding you will try to reject an opinion saying that you need to in accommodating we will accept an opinion saying that it is good in competing we will say both the opinions are competitive but we need to maximize which is good in compromise we need to settle both of them to understand the current situation in collaborating you need to support each other and let us give a try that's what so basically in your examination if in case the theory is not very uh, very easy for you to manage my sincere advice for you in the examination point if you please do remember please do remember what kind of strategies a company has to follow it could be avoiding double a triple c double a triple c that is what strategies uh, that an organization so first of all you have something called uh, uh, you have something called uh, rtp understood rtp is basically the types of conflicts for these types of conflicts we have got double a triple c Com competing compromising and collaborating and avoiding and accommodating okay like 
Okay. So when we are trying to settle the differences between two people, when we are trying to se settle differences between two employees, we are going to actually find out these kind of things, right? As a solution, organization can actually do because it's very difficult for us to convince everybody, right? Managing conflict with negotiation. There is something called negotiation. Negotiation, see there, first point, you need to understand. So they might, they might give, each one is very important here. They might give you a statement and ask you which of the following is this, right? A, a decision making process among the interdependent parties a decision making process among the interdependent parties who do not share identical preferences first of all let us understand what is this it's a so negotiation is a decision making process for the examination point of view remember second important thing is there are two parties A and B and these two parties are interdependent in the sense A and B both are interdependent in the sense A is dependent on B, B is dependent on A, both belong to different departments but both the departments are dependent on each other. I mean unless and until these two guys are actually convinced, unless and until these two people work together like production manager, finance manager, unless and until these two guys work together, it's going to be very difficult. In the sense who do not share identical preference in the sense about being a finance manager my preference is completely different i always think about minimizing the cost whereas being a production manager my preference is different i always think of maximizing quality maximizing production at the cost of anything <laughs> so production manager always thinks that i need to improve quality i need to produce no matter what Finance may say, you will produce, okay, but I know what is finance, you will unnecessarily land the company into uh, bankruptcy problems, idiot, uh, uh, so on. So, so, there are two interdependent people and both the parties should work together. At the same time, both the parties have different objectives. Finance manager objective is different. Production manager objective is different. Am I clear? So, when, when we, so, so convincing these two people is very important, right? You need to be in a position to satisfy production manager who's actually striving to give quality at any cost and uh, finance manager who's actually thinking about cost cutting so that uh, the fat of the company can be actually cut off. Then only company fat of the company can be cut off in the sense um, cost cutting. Okay, right. So th that is negotiation. So it's a decision making process between two people, between two interdependent people who have got different objectives, right? That is that sentence you remember for the sake of examination. All right. Next one, distribute to negotiate, win, lose negotiation, distribute in the sense oh, somebody has to lose, somebody has to win. That means we will always talk to both negotiation. Why am I using the word negotiation? I will call both the parties. I will listen to both the parties. I will hear both the parties. I will give an opportunity to both the parties to explain why their opinion is perfect. I will pay attention to every suggestion of both the parties. Then thereafter, I will say, boss, somebody has to sacrifice. <laughs> Weighing on the decisions, right? That is one thing. So, distribute and integrate and negotiate, win win situation, and both should be winning. That means somehow we need to we need to come to a conclusion where yes, both the parties are good and we will sort out the issues like this. So, negotiation is a decision making process between two interdependent parties, but they have different objectives. Distributive negotiation, one has to lose, one has to win. Yes, I mean, simply we say, see, in which a fixed amount of assets divided between parties. I mean, okay, boss, uh, your opinion is good. You take these many assets, you take these many resources. Maybe you will get less resources, but you are getting something. You asked me 100 crores, you asked me 100 rupees, but I gave you 80 crores. You asked me 150 crores, but I gave you 120 crores. In this way, one will definitely lose because he wants maximum resources to be allocated on his department. Integrated, uh, integrative negotiation, the both will win. Okay, both of you, I, I understand both the processes are good. Okay, you do with this, you do with this. Let us continue. Let us give a try. Both the opinions are good. Very nice, awesome. So I think both the opinions have, both the opinions have got uh, different elements. Have got elements which are constructively helping the organization in a different way, like this. Next one distribute to negotiation techniques so basically now you you first of all you need to understand from the examination point of view what kind of negotiation tactics do we have number one distribute to negotiation where win-lose situation happens integrative negotiation where win-win situation happens so they might ask you in which of the following situation win-lose negotiation takes place distributive in which of the following tasks win-win negotiation takes place integrative negotiation Everybody clear? Yes. So negotiation is a decision making process between two interdependent parties. But however, they have different 
different objectives and such people first there is there is a mechanism where you try to discuss with the people you try to give a chance to express what their opinion is actually okay then in that case win lose negotiation takes place next one integrative negotiation basically is something where win win negotiation both the parties will definitely win so nobody is going to lose anything so you need to remember for the examination where win lose situation happens where win win situation win lose situation happens under distributive win win situation happens where integrative both the parties will be equally satisfied both the parties uh, will be equally satisfied and will be allowed okay that is one thing all right now distributive negotiation techniques so one is threat distributive means what one has to lose one has to win so threat threat consists of implying that one will punish the party if it doesn't concede your position understood now boss if you don't if you don't move out of your opinion i'm telling you, you are saying this is on so but we are sorry we have already finalized one so you need to so we will we will threaten that fellow saying that if you don't you will lose out next thing firmness versus concern sticking to your target position so you are giving an opinion very good you stick to the process which is given to you don't tell me all this nonsense next persuasion we will convince him so there are three ways one is we will say eh do it third one you i mean we will say you have to stick to the position so we are trying to give him three options basically here number one we will try to threaten that fellow we will try to uh, tell him that you stick on to the main thing don't go away from the main process and we will try to convince that fellow okay anything is possible and distributive right understood yes so basically uh, if you want to manage conflicts at the organization one of the very important technique that we have is negotiation what is this negotiation it is a decision making process between two interdependent parties who have got different objects so we call both of them we have a meeting with them we we hear them we listen to them we take their opinions and thereby under distributive we will definitely ensure one fellow has to withdraw from what he is saying and in nego integrative both the parties will be satisfied at any cost that is what okay under distributive obviously we have got three important tactics being a manager i use to convince those people i will threaten them i will tell them you just don't go away from the main thing otherwise i will try to convince him understood <laughs> understood because why we are it's not about uh, first anything you can do randomly depend depends on the person you can start with persuasion first cool i mean convince them you can also start with threat that is up to you okay so it depends on the employees it depends on the style of a manager it depends on the situation it depends on the level of education etc suppose when when you're talking to workers obviously the first important thing you can definitely go for threatening because they will not understand if you start convincing if you start motivating right that's what okay then what strategies number one first headings itself you remember here you need to understand the existing why 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 is there a conflict why is there a conflict you need to investigate exactly so because just because somebody tells you something you should not go on that you cannot simply try to settle the issue without having the root cause for it so understand the situation first next one acknowledge the problem acknowledge the problem in the sense you need to tell them what this is what i mean suppose if a person says sir this is what then you say okay very nice i understand that this is a problem i understand this is a problem so first of all find out the root cause and the next of all you keep telling the people whoever have raised an objection saying that yeah i understand this is a problem i understand so because everybody when he expresses when he or she expresses an opinion when he or she has a difference of opinion or a disagreement definitely there will be logical race so then you say yeah i understand i understand that is that this is a problem like this is a third line you see it says he told the other just don't worry about it it is in that important so one member was frustrated with the direction the organization was taking then immediately manager replied don't worry don't worry that's not so important okay keep in mind i mean to say you need to acknowledge basically what is the problem you need to acknowledge you need to inform them okay that is one thing next one be patient i'm telling you if you if you suppose suddenly somebody comes and says this is my problem is a idiot you always you say like get lost idiot if you talk like this being a manager to the people without even listening to that fellow without even understanding what he is actually trying to express it will create law so taking decisions in haste in a hurry will create lot of so haste makes waste in the sense haste means taking decisions in a hurry obviously so you need to wait for some time and give a thought process and see what exactly 
could be the solution and listen to them there could be a better way when the person is disagreeing right avoid using coercion see most of the time people will not agree if you start imposing if you start uh, shouting if you start uh, threatening if you start insulting if you start humiliating if you start abusing if you start saying that no waste uh, you don't do anything nothing 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 if you go on saying that. so avoid such things okay next one focus on the problem always remember whenever somebody comes up with a disagreement whenever somebody comes up with an opinion or something always focus on the problem you don't i mean many times what happens managers if if there's a politics in the organization if x comes and complains and x is a lady manager will say okay ma if y comes and complains and y is a male member so say eh, chal lady at work that means <laughs> you are only focusing on the individual you are not actually focusing on the problem so your job in the organization not about the person who's bringing the complaint not about the individual who's actually telling you that so and so looking at the person looking at the personality of the person looking at the language of the person looking at the caste of the person looking at the person you can't solve conflict in the organization otherwise you will mess up the organization. organization you will have to look at what is exactly saying that is what so focus on the problem not on the person okay that is very important so no discrimination when it comes to people bringing opinions etc etc next esther so the question is going to be what question is going to be like uh, what kind of strategies company can adopt if you want to if any company wanted to minimize number 1 you need to understand the situation you need to acknowledge the problem you need to first of all tell them yes this is a problem okay you need to be patient and listen to them and don't take quick decision you need to always stop forcing them stop intimidate intimidating in the sense intimidation means suppose mr a if you don't do this i will remove you if you if you go on saying like this i will throw you out of my room <laughs> this kind of things are basically like sometimes teachers will say you know if you ask next question idiot i will throw you out of the class i will throw you from the window <laughs> not out of the class <laughs> uh that kind of thing is basically intimidation intimidation you are threatening somebody if he or she doesn't do something you're going to do something you're going to take an action that kind of thing nobody will listen now it is i'm telling you to be very frank okay uh, focus on the problem instead of instead of instead of rejecting somebody's opinion instead of rejecting somebody's say or expression you better always focus on the problem what is actually bringing out instead of simply rejecting because he's so and so male female whatever right establish guidelines always remember whenever there is a process of doing something in every organization in every department you should always give something called code of conduct do's and don'ts if you do not tell them these are the do's these are the things that you got to do these are the things that you got not to do so once you give a guidelines once you give a modus operandi once you give exactly the method these are the things do's don'ts etc then people if 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 you have already done some research and you have told people that these are the things that you are so unless you have guidelines given to the people then obviously every time they will come up with something because you already have given guidelines they will strictly follow that okay so company if you really want to avoid conflicts between departments among the individuals etc etc it's better to always have for every department every role every job every person so every job has some roles and regulations every job has some roles and responsibilities so for all these things give them guidelines okay that is very important and tell them boss if you don't meet these guidelines i'm not going to accept these are the rules these are the procedures these are the regulations and if you don't follow then definitely you are not in this team yeah keep the communication open keep the communication open in the sense you never come to an understanding listening to one fellow always let everybody say what they want it to say so that's what so if you always maintain a distance being a manager if you maintain a distance between employees and you if there's one kilometer distance between employees and you definitely they won't be able to tell you what exactly is their problem so you need to give them a standpoint where they can actually express that's what next act decisively it's like you see it's it's act decisively in the sense never act without gathering proper information if you want to take a decision if you really want to uh, conclude on somebody's opinion if you want to say that somebody's opinion is good if you want to say some, this method is good or that is good this is good etc etc you always take a decisive act decisively in the sense collect information collect the feedback analyze the information then come up that's what it says so unless and until you are properly informed unless and until you have proper information and data that is collected about every issue never ever act that is very important okay 
that is one thing awesome yes we finish this lesson everybody clear so this is i i, I assume that this uh, last lesson is very important so there are two more uh, uh, important uh, lectures i will take before you go for examination okay don't worry all the best you must have already studied focus in this subject focus on the headings when you focus on the headings with the concept you can easily guess all right yes have a good day take care